Hey guys, welcome to Living in New Hampshire. My name's Cody and I'm a local real estate agent with EXP. In today's video, we're gonna talk about the housing market in 2023. If you're thinking about buying a home in 2023, you're probably not alone. Over the past few years, many home buyers were unsuccessful despite record low interest rates during much of 2020, ultimately dropping below 3% around June of that year. At first glance, this would seem like a great opportunity for home buyers when in fact sellers were able to capitalize the most, allowing them to sell their house for top dollar and in many cases walk away with six figures in profit after only owning the home for just a few years. This allowed people living in expensive states like California and New York to take that money and reinvest it in more affordable markets like Arizona, Florida, and Nevada. Inevitably, this caused home values to skyrocket throughout the country. Yet, with record low interest rates, that increase wasn't being felt by many buyers. That was until March of 2022 when the Fed began raising rates. This began putting pressure on buyers as monthly mortgage payments started increasing, ultimately forcing many people to adjust their criteria. At the same time, sellers began to realize that sub-3% interest rates were likely a thing of the past, making it tough to justify selling their home even if it meant getting top dollar. Yet, there were still many optimistic buyers hoping rates would go back down again. Regardless of buyer demand, there were still a lot of homeowners that had tried to time the market. For the ones that needed to sell, less bidding wars resulted in sale prices at or below list price. Unlike 2020, when every property had 10 offers for $50,000 above the asking price, now that rates have remained above 5% for quite some time, we've began seeing more buyers re-enter the market in hopes of securing a better deal. While this is true to some degree, the lack of inventory is preventing home prices from falling significantly. Yet many of the markets that saw double-digit appreciation during the peak have since come down slightly. A majority of those being sunbelt states, which are places with mild weather. While there's a lot of factors involved pertaining to a housing crash, it's often stated that many Americans have a record high amount of equity in their homes. So unless they began borrowing from their home's equity at a high rate, the majority of homeowners wouldn't be underwater even if home values dropped significantly. Not to mention the percentage of buyers that purchased a home with cash over the past few years. Which isn't surprising considering the benefits of owning real estate versus keeping money in the stock market or a low yield savings account. So if home buyer demand has slowed down and many sellers have decided to stay in their home for the time being, what could ultimately affect home prices in a significant way? Leading us into the topic of unemployment and home building. As we just discussed previously, sellers have a large amount of equity which would likely allow them to weather a storm. Even if that wasn't the case, people are much more knowledgeable these days when it comes to topics like house hacking and short term rentals. So if that meant renting out a bedroom to make ends meet, many homeowners would likely consider it, especially when you take into account the amount of renters nationwide, which is why many builders are now shifting their focus to multifamily homes and large-scale apartment buildings. Despite all the conflicting information regarding a market crash, choosing to purchase a home should ultimately be a personal decision rather than an effort to time the market. It's important to have a long-term outlook and consider factors like population and job growth allowing you to choose a market with room for upside in the future. At the end of the day, if you plan on living in your home for the next 10 to 15 years, the current market conditions likely won't impact your decision in the long run. And that wraps up the video guys, I hope you enjoyed this one, and if you did, be sure to leave a like, comment, and subscribe down below. And as always, if you're thinking about moving to New Hampshire or you just have any questions, I'll leave my contact info in the description below. Thanks for watching.